let's talk about high achievers. Now, if you're a high achiever or maybe you have clients that have the tendencies of being a high achiever, then this is going to be an episode that I think you're going to relate to or you're going to find some very interesting tips and information that is likely to fire off some aha moments for you. Now, being a high achiever can be a really great thing, right? You can achieve a lot of things, you can be very productive, you can have this really great way of just saying that's what I'm going to do and you get that thing done and uh, and that's fantastic. But here's the thing that I find often becomes a problem for high achievers. It's the one thing that high achievers often miss. Now, I can say I, I have some high achiever type tendencies a little bit for myself. Not I've not always been a high achiever. It's probably something that I've, um, you know, developed more so as I got into business and personal development. But I definitely do come across clients who are high achievers from time to time, okay? And, you know, these are people that you can recognise fairly well because they might fall into some of these kind of categories, okay? So they've, they're likely to have had, you know, some kind of successful career. So they've got into leadership roles usually fairly young, and uh, and are real go-getters in their career. So they'll become leaders quite young, um, you know, level up through the ranks of their career quite quickly. And they will have had a, you know, history of creating really great results in the workplace, um, being recognised for their achievements and, uh, and, you know, being a really get shit done kind of person. So professionally they might be, you know, they're really high achieving in their career. You might also find that high achievers tend to be people who um, do a, create a lot of personal achievements. So they might have been, you know, exceedingly good at some kind of sport. It might have been dance or some other kind of sport where they were performing at a high level and winning medals or awards or things like that. Um, they also might be, um, their their personal fitness might be at a really high standard. So these are the people that just by looking at them, not always, but just by looking at them, you can see that they work out, right? You can see that looking after themselves and going to the gym and exercising is high in their values because clearly they have a body that matches this uh, high achiever. So that can be things. I'm not saying all of these things have to be for a high achiever, but, you know, you'll find a majority of these things. Now, high achievers might also be of great service to their community and be involved in community groups in some kind of way, um, whether they're business groups or um, community groups, sporting groups, you know, maybe church, whatever that might be, but they... They pride themselves on their service to their community, okay? So, um, and they tend to be a bit of a go-to peer, uh, go-to person, right? So if you need something done, you go to these people because even though they, they're they busy, um, if you want something done, they'll be the person who can get the things done, right? So so there's a lot of good attributes there, right? Like they're, they're high achieving, they're reliable, they're driven, they're focused, all of those things, right, which is good, it's good. But here's the thing, is that often when people are high achievers, there's something that's missing. So they might be feeling like they're lacking connection, they might be having difficulty in their relationships, they might be feeling isolated, They might be feeling unfulfilled. They might always be looking for what is the next thing that they can work on or achieve that, you know, will give them this kind of buzz or this high in their achievement kind of driven focus. Um, But they never really seem to stop to enjoy their achievements. It's always what's the next thing, what's the next thing. And it's always like they've got something, like there's something missing that they just can't 
quite seem to fulfill within themselves. And this can be a problem and it might not be a problem that they noticed early on. So it might be through their 20s and 30s, you know, they're just achieving, achieving, achieving. I'm just really running on that high of, you know, doing all the travel or winning the awards and building the career and, and doing all, the, all those things and it's great. But then they get to a point where, yeah, they might start noticing that they've got some failed relationships or that they're not really sure where they're going to go to next in their career Um do they even have a purpose? They might start questioning their purpose. What am I even here for? Like, what am I? What am I doing all this for? And the thing that what we need to learn about this is that even though high achievers get things done, it doesn't necessarily mean that they don't have some old childhood trauma, uh, trauma or anything else happening in their in their background what it means is that they usually got very good at being very conscious mind focused and that they push down a lot of feelings and doubts and fears and they become very logical okay so they're very much in their logical mind and and this is, is especially something I see in female high achievers okay so they become very uh, goal oriented um, you know, driven, focused, but it's all very conscious mind. And it's also fairly masculine, okay? So it's, an, it's a masculine energy. It's all about, you know, doing, create, like doing, winning, achieving, goal setting, you know, planning, thinking, all of that kind of stuff. It's really quite masculine. And so, what that means is that often these people are dissociated from their emotions. Okay, so they're dissociated from their emotions. They might say that they don't, they don't often cry. You know, maybe they, they don't ever really stop to feel their feelings. They might get frustrated with people who are a bit more emotional because they would just be like, well, we don't have time to sit around and cry about it. Just get things done, Right. But the problem with that is it's not that they don't have emotions or feelings. It's just that they've become dissociated from them. And although that strategy of being very conscious mind focused will work up to a point, high achievers who are dissociated from their emotions and and cut off on their unconscious mind will get to a point where they just feel like, I don't feel like I have real connection. I don't feel like anybody really knows me. I don't feel like anyone really understands me. Um, I don't know if I'm in the right relationship. I don't know if my partner really gets me. Um, Or they've had other failed relationships or they just don't feel like they've got that real connection and that they're not sure, like, what is all this for? And... Often these people, when they're dissociated from their emotions, they do have childhood trauma and that's part of the reason why they're dissociated from it, right? It's because there's stuff that's happened in their their past and when we talk about childhood trauma, I'm not saying that it's people that have been, you know, fully abused. They might have been, but you don't have to have been fully abused. Like it's not uncommon for me to hear people say, well, you know, I I had a pretty good childhood. Like my parents were great. Yes, and what I also come to them find was that perhaps um, their parents didn't know how to support them emotionally through different uh, events, significant emotional events for them when they were young or perhaps there were things that happened in the family that nobody spoke about. Um, Perhaps there were things that happened at school where they were bullied or something else happened and they didn't feel like they could talk about it and their parents didn't speak about it with them. Um, so, you know, Gabor, uh, Gabor Mate speaks about this when it comes to childhood trauma is that it's not necessarily the extent of how severe trauma is as a child as to how much it affects us. It comes down to that whatever happens as a child, did you have an opportunity to talk about it did you have support? Did you know? Did you feel like someone was there to 
that cared if you were okay or not and wanted to support you through that. Like that is a big factor. And people sometimes have very well-meaning parents who are home, you know, they might be home and doing things, but they might not be emotionally connected. They might not be emotionally supported. You might not have felt like you could talk to them. So that is that is something that happens, right, sometimes. But, of course, then there are other levels that there is abuse, okay? So there might have been um, separations, like parents have separated or divorced or, uh, or a parent maybe passed away or a parent was emotionally unstable within themselves. Um, you know, a parent might have been a drinker. They might have had a lot of anger issues. They might have done a lot of yelling. They might have done a lot of criticising, um, you know, there could be all kinds of other stuff that's happened, right? But the, the the point that I'm getting here is that it's not a matter of how severe you think things were hap- like that happened when you were a child. It's just literally if you had some kind of a childhood where there were situations, there were events that were significant, significantly emotional for you and you didn't feel like you had the support or the connection or that it wasn't okay to show emotions or express emotions or, you know, anything like that in whatever form that happened, um, then that becomes tra- – that's trauma, right? That's where as a young child we develop these uh, beliefs that we're not good enough or we're not lovable or that there's something wrong with us or that we have to act in a certain way to get our needs met or to be accepted or not rejected or not abandoned. Um, And so all this stuff happens at the unconscious level, right? Because as young children, young children don't have the ability to logically think these things through, right? As young children, all we know is that I want to be loved, I want to be safe, I, I, you know, I want to be included, I want to be connected. And if those things aren't happening... I'm going to make meaning about that, usually, that it's something wrong with me, that I'm the problem. Okay, young children don't understand that it's the parents that aren't providing what they're meant to provide because we, you know, as young children, we assume that our parents are God, right, that our, our parents can do no wrong, that they're, they're the be all and not and, you know, all-knowing um, authority in our lives. So whatever they're saying or doing must be the truth and if there's any problem it must be me that's the problem okay so that's generally how childhood trauma exists right in whatever form that it has so even if you feel like as I said that your parents didn't do anything bad to you you could still have made meaning when you weren't getting your needs met as a child okay and so what then happens is our unconscious mind packs that away in our unconscious, it, it represses those things so that it's not up in your face all the time so you can get on with your life. And if you're a high achiever, you've probably got very good at packing it away and you just keep achieving things. You just keep moving forward and achieving things, not ever taking the time to think about how you feel or what you really need or, or anything else like that. Okay, but like I said, that gets to a point, it'll only work so far till then you start going, actually, I'm not getting my needs met, right? There's something missing here. And so in when you get to that space, it puts a cap onto what you can actually create for your life because there's a point, right, we get to in our life when we realise our life's not going to get better due to the amount of awards or money that we make or you know, any other kind of achievements or recognition, those things are great, but they don't replace having really fulfilling, loving, connected relationships, being able to really drop into your heart and express who you really are and how you really feel and having those deep connections with people, right, that are fulfilling. That's the stuff that you start realising, like none of this is getting me. And that can be very confusing for people, right, that have been high achievers, been getting all these accolades. It can be very confusing. It's like, well, why isn't this working? And this is the work that I do with high achievers. I do it with all kinds of people. But this is a really important work I do with high achievers is 
getting them to connect in with their unconscious mind. Because conscious mind, as we said, conscious mind is all our, our very logical thinking. It's our goal setting. It's very masculine energy. It's when you're in your head. It's about facts. It's about thinking. It's about planning. It's about doing. It's about achieving. Okay, so that's all our conscious mind. And that's not there's anything wrong with that. We all need that, whether we're masculine or feminine. We need an element of that. But we can't rely on that alone. We also need to connect in with our unconscious mind. And our unconscious mind is where our emotions are. It's all about feeling and our beliefs and our values. It's about being. It's abstract. It's symbolic. It's the feminine energy. Okay, and whether you're uh, male or female, you, you have both masculine and feminine energy within you, right? Um, and you'll be more dominant female or more dominant males not gender specific um, as a generalized thing we say most women are feminine but that's not a be all and end all there are women whose natural uh, energy is masculine right we see that and when you have relationships whether it's a heterosexual relationship or any other form of relationship there will be a masculine and a feminine energy in that relationship because that creates polarity okay so we have that polarity each within us individually as well and so we need to be able to connect in with these things within us. Okay, so the unconscious mind, it's the emotional, it's the feeling, it's the beliefs, it's the values, it's the being, it's, it's abstract, it's, it's symbolic. Okay, and we need to be able to connect in with this stuff. When there's a lot of trauma at that level, it's usually packed away because we don't want to bring any of that stuff out. And that works to a point, right? And it's useful if you don't have any tools or strategies to deal with that stuff because you don't want all this stuff coming up that you don't know what to do with. But this is why tools like NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, and Timeline Therapy and Hypnosis are so powerful because they all tap into the unconscious mind. And Timeline Therapy is a hugely powerful uh, process that allows you to be able to access all of those um, emotions, negative emotions, limiting beliefs, all of that stuff that's unhealed, it allows you to access that and to release it and to get all the positive learnings that you needed when you were a child and you didn't get. Okay, and it's very fast. It's a very fast process and um, you get to the root cause of this stuff you find, you reframe it, you find the positive learnings. And the reason why this works is because you are consciously communicating with your unconscious mind. So that means you get to, as an adult, go back and view what your unconscious mind has stored from your perspective as a child and reframe it with the knowledge and understanding and wisdom that you have now. Okay, but the thing is that you do it with the unconscious mind. You're not just doing it with the conscious mind. You're doing it with the unconscious mind. And when you learn to be able to do that and communicate with the unconscious mind at that level, you shift all kinds of things and your inner strength, your inner power, your intuition, your inner safety, your love, your own, you know, uh, connection to the power of the love energy, the heart center energy, which is you know the most powerful uh, energy in the world. You know when we talk about love, we're not talking about fluffy, you know rainbows and lollipops. Love, like the actual energy of love, which from a meta metaphysical uh, perspective, love is the only emotion, and everything else is an illusion. It's the cleanest, purest emotion and we always want to come from that place of love and come from that heart center because when we come from that heart center we become congruent between mind and body between conscious mind and unconscious mind and from that space we can connect with others okay we learn how to be vulnerable and not just talk about what we think or what we feel but show people what we feel Okay, so being able to show people your emotion is something that a lot of high achievers really struggle with because they often feel like it's weakness or, you know, whatever, it's just in the way. 
right? But you need to be able to learn how to do that. So by learning the tools of how to understand your own mind and your own language and your own emotions and your beliefs and your values and how to connect in with those things and to resolve any of that childhood childhood trauma or wounding or anything that's unresolved there it is an um, it, it is an enormous boost to what you can then create in your life whether that be personally professionally or anything else because it opens up your true potential you become a whole operating unit okay you're not you're not spending any energy keeping all this old stuff packed away, right? You release energy because if there's stuff that you're not dealing with from your past, it takes a lot of energy for your unconscious mind to keep that packed away, right? Like it does, it creates, it keeps a lot of energy. It creates dis-ease throughout your body because here's the other thing, for people who are highly dissociated, Often what can happen if they've got stuff there that needs resolving and they keep pushing it down, the body doesn't like holding on to that stuff, right? The body doesn't like holding on to that stuff. So it will start giving you messages that you need to do something about it. And some of those messages, because the unconscious mind is the, the domain of the body, some of those messages can show up in the form of pain. It could be back pain, neck pain, shoulder pain sciatica you know these kinds of things can show up that's when it gets to an extreme right so for the health of you as a whole integrated unit it's really important that you learn how to resolve any of that old stuff that's stored in your unconscious mind it's stored in your body how to resolve it release it and uh so that you can step up as more of your fully expressed self who can then connect way better with people whether that's personally professionally or anything else you can get a better sense of what's truly important to you what your real purpose is how you want to show up in the world how to be fully expressed so that people actually know the true you so that you can honor yourself that you can celebrate your own achievements that you can really get that sense of what ever life has to offer what what is the reward in that for you right that feeling of connection and fulfillment and satisfaction and love all of those things it's such a powerful place to be and you will just level up in whatever it is that you're doing whether it's your business your career you can no doubt create more of the things that you've achieved in the past but doing it from a very heart-centered space where you feel it, where you feel connected to it, where you feel fulfilled by it, where you feel satisfied with what you achieve. Now, of course, for people who are in this space and are, have, have got big visions, so maybe you've got a big vision about, you know, what it is that you want to create. Maybe you want to, there's a legacy you want to create, right? Maybe you want to, like, I, I love working with people who help other people right that's my passion because you know when I first got help from a coach uh, and I realized how much difference it made to my life I went oh my god if I can change if I can get rid of all my old crap um, I need to be able to help other people do that right and so I started helping other people and seeing other people shifts made me think oh my god if I can I can help other people shift their stuff there's no way that I could ever reach as many people as who needs this by myself right so that's why I started I started teaching because I'm like I've got to teach other people how to do this because if there's more than me who are out there you know helping people then this is a massive ripple effect that that goes on and goes on right so I'm, I'm super passionate about helping people who help people and that is how we raise consciousness of the planet Okay, so now when we think about raising consciousness of the planet, this is when we can start getting into a bit of a spiritual side of things, okay? Because there, we actually have three minds. Yes, we have a conscious mind. Yes, we have an unconscious mind, but we also have a higher conscious mind. Now, whether you're into spirituality or not, throughout history, this isn't 
woo-woo stuff, right? Throughout history, you'll see the trilogy. Any kind of culture you go into, there will be the, the trilogy. Even it's the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, right? Um, in Huna, they've got the Hawaiian ancient Huna. They've got a versions of it. In e- ancient Egypt, they had versions of it. You know, any culture around the world, they'll have this, the trilogy. And we can look at the trilogy as being this, the conscious mind, the unconscious mind, the higher conscious mind, right? Now, if you want to connect in with your higher self, and I won't go right into this. This can be for another episode. I'll talk more about this. But if you want to go and connect in with your higher self and, you know, if we think about people like Nikola Tesla, Albert Einstein, you know, these amazing people, they all spoke about downloading stuff, okay? They're they're incredible inventions, everything that they knew, their knowledge, they talked about downloading stuff. They're downloading it from consciousness. This is having a connection to their higher conscious mind, right? Higher conscious mind is intuition, it's guidance, it's knowledge, it's wisdom, it's consciousness, it's everything is perfect, it's all happening for you, right? But if you want to be connected into that kind of energy, you need to know how to connect with your unconscious mind, okay? Because the conscious mind communicates with the unconscious mind, okay? So conscious mind, guiding parental figure to the unconscious mind. So you want to talk to your unconscious mind kindly, like a guiding parental figure, as if your unconscious mind is a child, who you love and adore and want to support, the higher conscious mind communicates through the unconscious mind. Okay, so if you want to have these connections and really evolve into who you truly are and achieve some amazing things in the world, you've got to do the work with the unconscious mind. Okay, and then you can receive all kinds of greatness that is the truth of who you are. Okay, so this is stuff that I teach anyway. I love, I could, t- I could talk about this all day, but I know today we're speaking about high achievers. Okay, so I would love to know if you can relate to what I've been talking about today. If you've been, if you've, if you're a high achiever or if you've worked with high achievers, can you now recognize that this is part of what goes on? It's like that do, 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 you know, achieve, 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 but there's something missing. Right? That's the connection to the unconscious mind, to the feelings, to the beliefs, to the truth of who you are. Okay, so look, I hope this has been really helpful for you today. Uh, you know, as an NLP master trainer, I am obsessed with how the mind works and how our emotions work, how we show up as humans, how we can, you know, release any of this old childhood anything kind of wounds, trauma, whatever that is. And people often ask me, you know, how can they work with me? And of course, people can come and do trainings with me and I've got some high level um, programs that I run for people that are, are quite advanced as well. But what I have just launched is something to make it really easy for you to be able to work with me. And that is, I'm really excited about this. I'm so excited. It's a, I've just launched a membership group that you can join on Facebook. It's called the Coaching Circle Insiders, where it's a paid membership group, but it's very, very low price. It's such a no brainer. Uh, But each week I go live in there asking all of your, answering all of your questions and teaching about personal development and coaching and spirituality and, you know, social media, anything around if you're someone who's into evolving yourself and helping other people and growing a business about that at the same time. And that's my jam, right? That's the stuff that I just nerd out on all the time. And so I've created a group for it to be really easy for people to come in and learn about this kind of stuff. So there's a link um, under this in the show notes that you can check that out. And um, I've got a really super special launch offer on that. So you can actually join for like $50 a month. It's a, it's a super no brainer. There's going to be recordings in there, like an amazing community. It's just mind-blowing I'm super excited about it so I'd really love to see you there so go and check that out and uh and and remember right no matter how high achieving you are you can go deeper within yourself okay and when you go deeper within yourself and you really connect in with your unconscious mind and how you feel and what's really truly important to you you'll be able to develop some really rewarding relationships and experiences in this lifetime that are going to far exceed 
any of the material or career or external achievements that you can ever make for yourself. And it's not saying you, you, you've got to stop achieving, like achieve away, my friend. But if you want to really open yourself up to true fulfilment and joy and love and connection, this is the ticket. So I hope this has really given you some insights today and, uh, and I'd, love your, I'd love your feedback, your comments. Please uh, give a uh, rating if you've been enjoying the Coaching Circle podcast. I'd love for you to give me a rating, uh, a five-star rating review. That would be lovely. You know, I really appreciate getting this information out to people and so it's, if it's helped you, please share it with someone who could do with hearing this. So until next time, keep being awesome. Oh,